Welcome to your father's house this morning. We're glad that you're with us on this October 12th. It's hard to believe it's in the middle of October. Um, our theme today is we're taking a look at how to respond to different religions. Today we'll take a look at Scientology and Christian science as our study today and cherish the strength of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So let's turn to our Inside Our Bulletin for our memory verse for this month or for the last couple months. It's 1 Peter chapter 3, 15, in the inside of your bulletin. And we're doing the first three lines. The last line will be in November. But let's say it together, the first three lines. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. And that's why we're sharing our faith. And I'm getting um, just encouragement as we do that this time now we want to take a moment of silence to give your past week to your lord we've all had a variety of a different week of joys and sadness and challenges let's give it to the lord this morning so we can take our hearts and mold it for this upcoming week at the end of our silent prayer we'll turn to psalm 46 in the very front of your hymnal psalm 46 will be our intro prayer this morning let us pray let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, what a beautiful song you inspired us to write and sing that you alone are our strength. Lord, as we look at different world religions today that, that really say that the strength is inside of us and how many times that we have fallen short. Lord, open our hearts today. Grab them, nurture them, strengthen them of your precious word. So as we go about, we rely on your strength and on ours. In your precious name, in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, thank you, Jeffrey. You can hit the lights there. We're on non-communion Sundays. It's great to use the talent of John Voss to help us with just pictures and videos um, to guide us. And as, as I said before, we're, now we're taking a look at, uh, we talked about Mormonism and Hinduism and um, Jehovah Witness, and, and, and now we get to Scientology and Christian science. Where does your strength come from? A preacher was preaching to his, to his congregation one Sunday, and, and he was really focusing on the addiction of sin. And, um, and as he closed his powerful message, he started saying, he goes, if I had all the beer in the world, I'd throw it in the river. And with great emphasis, he says, if I had all the wine in the world, I'd throw it in the river. And then with one loud shout, he goes, if I had all the whiskey in the world, I'd throw it in the river. And then he sat down, and the worship leader stood up and says, Now we'll sing number 365, Shall We Gather at the River? <laughs> Strength versus weakness. This is something that we challenge from day to day of where do your strength come from? Interesting, in the 19th century, in the, when it was 1800s, the Protestant Christian Church had two revival sections called the, the Second and Third Great Awakening from 1800 to 1830 and then 1850 to 1900s, nurturing just incredible movement and all that fiery brimstone meshes of trying to get people to wake up and enjoy the gospel and to live godly lives. But against those movements came some other movements. As we talked already, Jehovah Witness came about at that time. Um, the Mormon Church arrived at that time. And also some of these churches called metaphysical families. Medical families, including Christian science, were well known as mind cure and mental cure or mental healing movements. Um, all about your mind. All about that you can do it. You can heal yourself. And of course, back then, medicine and science were still developing and encouraging. And so, um, so he really, these movements start saying that it's all in your head. It's all in your mind. So let's start with Christian science this morning. And as that began with Mary Baker Eddy in 1821 to 1910, and she, her core theology is this, the idea that God's creation is entirely good, that the material world, including evil, sickness, death, are all illusions, that humankind, as an idea of God or mind, is perfect. The limitations and flaws of what Eddie called mortal man are simply mankind's mistakenly view of itself. 
Man is not matter, she wrote. He is not made up of brain, blood, bones, and other material elements. And so here she talks about is that it's all about not matter. This is all illusion that you're looking at each other. This thing in front of us or you're sitting on. It's all, it's all, you got to rise above that. And so one of her greatest components, though, was an author by Mark Twain. I mean, well, we all know Mark Twain, and he did not like her. She goes, he said that the only real thing for her was the dollar. And he criticized her several times. Why? Because his daughter... Uh, became a Christian science as well. And so this is our journey today as we take a look. Here are some of the things that they talk about. Frank um, Wollendeck, a Christian science practitioner, back in 2011 says there, there is no person to be healed, no material body, no patient, no matter, no illness, no one to heal, no substance, no person, no thing, no place that needs to be influenced. And that's the first that they must be clear about that there's nothing that we have to be concerned about. It's all your belief in your head. You can overcome every illness. And that was one of the challenges, too, as we see in groups in Oregon years ago and many of our family and friends, is that they would not even go to the doctors. And many children have passed away because, now none of us like to go to the doctors, but boy, Kathy, we know we're glad the hospital is around and those who are in the medical field, when we really need them um, to help us get us back on track. But they said it's all in your head. And that's something as they start going and dive into the spiritual force that Jesus was a person, but he wasn't Jesus Christ. Christ is just an idea, a, like a wayshore to show us that we have to go beyond our mental state. And then you go to Scientology. Scientology came a little bit later in the 20th century. Ron Huber, who wrote a lot of fancy books. And he said one time, six years before he started Scientology, he says that, he said this, if you want to make a lot of money, start a new religion. And six years later, he started this new religion, and, um, and, it, and he got deeper into what Christian science was talking about, and he used foreign terms like, we're all thetans, all right? A conscience above any material item. And our job is to clear our ugliness of the past. We have to clear it. And so that was his form. And Scientology really marked it to Hollywood. And so you'll know some of these, these actors up here in a second. Guys that, um, that embrace that, like Tom Cruise. Um, and so it becomes very popular to go and say, hey, you know, maybe I should take a dive into this. And that's why young adults, we want to encourage you guys, is don't follow the popular culture out there. Another one is John Travolta as well, as they believe in sci Scientology. And Scientology craves to those who are addicted, to whatever it might be. And they have... You can go for a couple months to their camps, and it's pretty intense to say you can do it. You can clear your past. You can clear anything of your past so you can get above. Almost sounds like New Age, doesn't it, in Sedona? It's been around for years as people have gone away from God and looked to their own strength. And that's our, as we take a look at this today, and now as we continue here, is that so their sin. Our sin today, so often, is that we have this picture of illusion. A picture of a lady floating in the air is that no matter what's happening in your life today, you can, it's not really there. They don't believe in heaven or hell or, or Satan or sickness. Um, but as we know that, um, sickness is for real. In fact, if I had a pin up here, Robbie, and I would stick the pin into you, what would you say? <laughs> I don't feel it. Yeah. Ow! It would really be hurt, and we all have pain. And that's the common ground that we can begin with any of this group, and say pain is real. It is real. Sometimes we start our own pain. Other people, um, in fact, I saw on the, on the Weather Channel a time about rattlesnakes, and they showed pictures, videos of people messing with rattlesnakes, and what happened to them? They were rushed to the hospital and their arms all swelled up 
and a quite painful. And so this is what people talk about, and in this, from Sedona to New Age to Scientology to um, Christian Science, is they, they, they move God and say God is in everything. Everything we have and in, He's in. We are a part of God, and that we can overcome any sadness, any strength, any weakness, any health challenges. We can overcome. We can do this. Can we really do this, though? Genesis chapter 3 talks about real pain. When Adam and Eve fell from the garden, and the pain, the women would have to bear incredible childbearing pain. Men would have to work for a living and would have to be pain of toiling. And from there, we all have this incredible pain. And so where do we go here is that we all have weaknesses. Every one of us. And can we put our weakness back together? That's what's so cool about John chapter 5, about the invalid sitting by a pool there beside it. And the, the theory was is that when an angel came to stir the water, the first one in the pool would be healed. We find in John chapter 5 that he was there for over 30 plus years. He was never fast enough to get into the pool. Now we don't know if that's a demon. We don't know if that's an angel of God. But Jesus came to him, and he didn't have to go to the pool. And the eyes were on Jesus. It's Jesus is our strength, and he is our comfort. And it begins with the great gift of forgiveness. Forgiveness of sins that he's given, or, or to, to realize the great help, that we need help with others. And this is the first thing, and if any kind of addiction group out there, and we all, as we come to this Christian church, is the first thing we have is that we need help. We cannot do this life without help. And that's as you talk about addiction programs like Believe in a Higher Power, AA was started by, a Christian, by Christian groups to encourage people is that you need to come and receive help from others. And that help comes from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we said, that incredible Isaiah chapter is that he is, our, he is our eagle. Listen to Isaiah one more time. It's powerful to help us is that even young men grow weary. Even those who are strong. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right hand is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth faint and be weary. And young men shall fall exalted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They mount on wings like eagles. They'll run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Who clears us from our past? <laughs> when the Ingrams of Scientology says that you have a lot of hiccups, no wonder you're not making another $10 billion movie, John Travolta or Tom Cruise, is that you're down low, and they have to get these Ingrams. That's why actors and actresses have highs and lows so much, because they rely on their own strength. We, we've done that. <laughs> And we know our strength is not really strong without the gospel and the foundation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. His great forgiveness is the only thing we need to clear us from our past. And no matter what suffering we go through today, He'll give us the strength and the family of the church here to help us walk and encourage one another. It's all about Jesus. And so as you have family and friends that enjoy Scientology and Christian science, ask them, where do you really get your strength? I get my strength from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know that story about the gentleman that was, got too close to the, to the rim there of the Grand Canyon, and he started falling, he grabbed onto his dear life, and he's holding on. He's yelling, is anybody up there? Is anybody? And I'll say, heard a voice, I'm up here. Who's that? God. God, perfect, great, can you help me here? Of course I can. What, what are we going to do, Lord? I want you to let go. Let go? Are you kidding? I'm not going to let go. I'm God. Let go. 
<laughs> Lord, you got to be crazy. Is anybody else up there? <laughs> so often we're looking for other things to grab when we're falling. And today we fall on the wings of Jesus Christ, on His hands, on the cross, that He forgives us of our past and gives us the strength and renewal that every day is a day to enjoy, but a day to let Christ lead us to the path of this unconditional life, to love or not to love. And when we don't love or others don't love, we will have suffering times. But it's Jesus Christ that gives us the comfort and the strength. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time,